Hello and welcome to Console Cowboys. So in this section, we're gonna take a look at authentication, authorization, and visibility of functions. In particular, in this video, we're gonna take a look at function visibility because that'll set us up for everything else. So open up your browser and head over to remix.ethereum.org and we're gonna take a look at a simple example of how visibility of functions work. So create a new file and we'll call it visibility.soul and we're gonna create two functions in here, a private function and a public function, just so that we understand the difference in how they work, because so far, all you've really seen is public functions and that we can call those directly. So the first thing that we're gonna need is our Pragma Solidity line. And we'll use the same compiler version we have been using, 0.6.6. .6. And let's create our contract, and we'll name it Visibility. And inside here, we're going to create a function called add. So function add, we'll take in two uint values, underscore a and uint underscore b. And we're going to make this private this time. We've been looking at public, but now we're actually going to take a look at private and see how that differs. And we're going to return a uint, which is going to be the addition of our two variables, so we're going to say return underscore a plus underscore b. And now if we compile this and take a look at it, we would expect that we could get our value back, right? So we'll say deploy. But when we take a look, we don't actually see the ability to call our function and that's because it's private and that's the difference. So a private function can only be accessed by a public function within our contract. So we need to create a public function so that our public function can utilize this functionality. So we'll say function get add result And we'll use the same variables. And because of the scope of the different functions, we can actually use the same variables and they won't screw each other up. And this looks basically the same, except that we use the public keyword. And now in our return statement, instead of just returning the value, we're gonna leverage the functionality from the private function. So that's how we separate public versus private. Our public can actually access the private functions and we're not gonna expose those to the world. So instead, we're just gonna call our add function from our return here by sending over the variables and getting the return value and then we can actually call this from the public function. So now let's redeploy this new code by going over to compile, heading back, and we're going to delete our old contract and hit deploy. So now we have the new contract and we see a get add result. And that's because we actually have get add result as public. So if we put in two and two, we should get back four. And indeed we do, we see four down here. And that is because we're able to call this public function, which then calls the private function for us. That's how visibility works within applications. It's the same on the blockchain as it is off the blockchain with standard languages. But the problem with some of the older versions of Solidity is that the older versions of Solidity defaulted to public and you didn't actually have to specify the visibility of the function. So if you just created this add function and you took off this word private, it would actually be a public function and the developers were not always aware of this. Often they just assumed that it was private by default and exposed the functionality to the world. And this is similar to when you're assessing web applications. Often a developer assumes that if they don't document functionality that you're never gonna find it. So by not actually specifying the functionality or including it in the UI, they don't assume you're ever gonna find it until you do, and then you have access to everything. 
And with smart contracts, if you're actually reviewing the code, you know what all of those public functions are, and you can determine whether it's sensitive functionality or not, and then leverage it for your attacks. So I hope you learned something in this video, or at least refreshed yourself on public versus private. And I'll catch you in the next video where we look a little bit deeper on this topic.